Today we're talking about filmmaking and specifically storyboarding. I'm going to show you a program that will make it a heck of a lot easier. By the way, before I move on, let's talk about the weird light situation here. One of my lights got messed up, so I'm waiting to fix that, but I need to get a video out, so let me know if you like this janky, weird, multiple color setup. That's with the LED lights off, that's with them on. So for those of you who don't know what storyboarding is, let me explain. Uh, before a f filmmaker goes and films a scene, uh, they need two types of scripts. Uh, number one, dialogue script. Pretty obvious, it just writes down what they say, what happens in the scene, and so on and so forth. And a storyboard script. This is sort of a script for the camera or the visual script. It basically maps out uh, what shot is going to go where in the film. Traditionally, this is done on paper with lots of different photos um, in little squares, uh, but a lot of people now do it digitally, and I'm going to talk about a way of doing it digitally. For a long time, I did mine on paper, and that's definitely easy to do because, you know, it's a lot easier just to hold a pencil than, you know, click a button on a, on a computer. Unless, of course, you have a Wacom tablet, then it would be a whole lot easier. But let's say you're like me and you film on the cheap and you don't have any expensive equipment. All you have is a laptop. This is a laptop I use, but this piece of software would literally run on any computer. This piece of software will run on a Linux computer, probably even a Raspberry Pi. I should try that. Anyway though, let me go ahead and jump on the computer and show you this piece of software and why it is so useful. Alright guys, so we are now here on my laptop. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get this program first off and then talk about why you should get it in a moment. So um, to uh, download this program, you're going to want to go to wonderunit.com slash storyboarder and it should come up here, not storyboarder.com. That's completely, un un I think it's unrelated. I actually don't know. But go to wonderunit.com slash storyboarder, not sponsored. <clears throat> and you can download for free um, for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, and so on. Um, and you can uh, scroll down here and see some of the features of this more in depth if you want to go there and look at that. I highly suggest that they have some really great, awesome features. But now let's go ahead and jump into the program itself. So when you open up Storyboarder, you're going to see all your recent storyboards, and you're going to have the options to open, create new storyboard, all of that stuff. Um, let's go ahead and just go pick create a new storyboard. And um, what you can do, you can actually you can actually create a storyboard based on a script that's already written. So if I had a script already written, I could import that script and it would sort of build the scene for me. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just create a blank project. Um, and then, of course, we'll choose our aspect ratio that we're shooting this. Most widescreen videos are going to be in 2.39 to 1, or sometimes called 2.4 to 1. Um, or, but if you're shooting for something like YouTube, you'll want to choose 16 by 9. I'm going to go ahead and choose ultra wide. And of course, you can name it. Test. And it will go ahead and create your project. Now what the basis of this program allows you to do is draw your storyboards in a digital format, um, specifically an exportable format, which we'll talk about in a moment. But let's go ahead and just talk about how the interface works and stuff like that. Um, so we have all our tools up in the top here, and we have things. We have things like a marker, a pencil, a um, pen, and of course a big fill and brush thing, uh, another big fill and brush thing, and then an eraser. And you can change the size of all these. Let's say I want to fill in a really tiny space. I could fill in with that. And I, of course, make that large as well. Um, if I wanted to fill in solid, I would take the pen tool, fill it all the way up as much as possible, and fill in a lot of that by solid. So a lot of really useful tools going on there. And, of course, you can change it using the open bracket and close bracket, just like on most programs, such as GIMP. So really, the drawing capabilities of this are pretty simple. They're not meant to be complicated as, say, Photoshop or something like that. Um, but it definitely does the job. And it's free, so, you know, don't really give for some mouth, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's go ahead and just erase this monstrosity here. Color changes, by the way, also up here, and you can choose a wide variety of color changes, and your recent colors will show up right here as well. My favorite tool is the pencil, so when I go ahead and create a new scene, if it's outside, I usually create a little horizon, and then, of course, fill in the blue sky, and then also the grass, of course. So I usually start off with a background layer like that for my shot, um, and of course if it'd be a down angle or an up angle, it would change where the horizon is, but this was just a basic straight on, straight angle, straight forward. And then of course you go ahead and draw your subject, um, assuming it's a human, um, I usually have it set to uh, 7 wide because that usually works pretty well, well, maybe 10, 10 looks good. So maybe we have a guy here, and maybe he's running or something, I don't know, that is not a leg, what the heck. Wow, that is bad. The great thing about storyboards, guys, is that on a small budget project, like most of us are making, 
the only person who has to interpret this is you. So as long as you can see it and understand what's going on, you're good. At least that's my excuse. Anyway, so I usually just draw my subject little stick figures like that. You could also, I've seen a lot of people use stick figures as well where they just have the person like, they just have a basic stick figure like this. And if they're running, they'd be more like that. Um, that almost looks better actually. Um, but you know, do whatever works for you. Um, if you go on the website, you can see examples of people doing really crazy awesome drawings. And again, if you have a Wacom tablet, Wacom tablet, by the way, is just a, um, well, Wacom is actually just a brand, but it's, taken over the industry and it's basically just a little pad and you have a, uh, a pencil uh, sort of like an Apple pencil or something like that electronic and you can draw that and just mute your cursor for drawing programs like this um, if you have something like that you probably shouldn't be using a free bit of software just get Photoshop or something but drawing is only one small part of what this program does if that was it then this program would probably wouldn't be any better than just using paper but these are some of the cool features uh, first off, speaking of Photoshop, you can actually click this little Photoshop button up here and if you have Photoshop on your computer, you can actually draw the frames inside of Photoshop and then it will automatically bring them into your timeline inside here, um, which is really useful. Speaking of timelines, let's say we want to go on to our next shot. If you hit this little plus button here, it will add a new clip and then um, you can go ahead and draw the next shot. So let's say I just wanted another little horizon here. I will say normally I would spend a bit more time on this stuff because, you know, I'm not being filmed so I can go as slow as I need to. Uh, but I'm just going quickly for the example. <laughs> Again, another excuse for bad drawing. He has his hands in the air. I don't know. Anyway though, you can just draw your scenes out like that and sort of get an idea of where your camera wants to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and open another project as a bit of an example of what a full timeline would look like. Another great thing about this program is that it automatically saves, I believe, every 5 to 10 seconds. Um, so you won't ever lose anything, which is good, unless your computer is fried. Then you have bigger problems. All right, so this is a project I was working on recently. It's a music video, which you'll probably see on this channel sometime soon. It's gonna be a couple weeks away though, um, but I'm still in the pre-production phase and I'm just storyboarding now. So what it is, I went by shot by shot and went ahead and just put down every single um, every single shot I needed. So I sort of thought about you know which scene I want where and in scene one A and B, this guy's packing a backpack and I'm not gonna show too much because I don't wanna give any away the actual music video, but I went ahead and just uh, showed what I want the whole thing to be. Um, so I've got, I don't know, like, okay, I've got 10 scenes in this and each one has like a couple frames. So that's how that works. Um, so you can go through your timeline here and you can actually time it to set it to change every, the default is every two seconds, but you can sort of watch it through and change the duration of shots. But I'm going to show you a better system to, uh, once you have all your things drawn, to even um, get a more better representation of what it could actually look like in the final project. Um, so let's say we went ahead and finished this whole timeline here. Um, here's the cool part. You can actually export this entire sequence into Final Cut Pro or Premiere, which is awesome. And you can edit it to um, your sound or in this case music. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go up to File and then, uh, X, and then Export Scene for Final Cut Pro 10 and Premiere. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and then it will go ahead and export it. Now, if you go to your project location, which is in, on Mac, it's under documents, but of course it'd be different depending on what computer you're on. If you go to your project under exports, you can select the export and you will get, if you're working with Final Cut Pro, you'll want to worry about this .fcp XML file, um, but if you're working in Premiere, I'll just import the basic XML file. And this is what it looks like once it's imported into your software. Now, of course, we had that default time to set to two seconds, which is the default for the program. Um, so we just got a whole bunch of images um, at uh, two seconds each. And I believe this is 2K resolution, I believe. Um, let's see, it is, yes, 2K resolution. Of course, it'd be 2151 by 900 because we shot in wide. All right, so now that we have all these projects as clips, we can actually change the length of each of them and even add things like, um, you know, Ken's burns if we wanted to go in here and add a quick Ken's burn. Let's choose a shorter clip so we can see it better. Choose Ken burn. Um, so you can do things like this to sort of show what you want the project to look like. So let's say in this shot we wanted a zoom in on this character so we could add a Ken's burn to actually show that in the image. Um, so we can use that to sort of shape how we want the edit to go. And it's even great if you can get um, maybe a couple friends, not even the actual actors, but just a couple friends to sort of say the lines of each person in the scene so you can sort of get an idea of the pacing of it. In this particular project's case, it's a music video so I can actually take the uh, music and edit the uh, project to the music. Um, and that's what I'll show you uh, here. And here you can see I've actually um, edited the project to go with the music. I can't play the music because copyright and all that stuff, um, but you can of course watch the final music video once it comes out.
hopefully. Let's go back to our newly imported example here, and I just grabbed some non-copyrighted uh, dub music that I can use to sort of show you the edit. So what I could do here is just sort of uh, zoom in and play through the music and say I wanted it to cut on the beats. I could, of course, change it to the beat cuts and figure out how long I want each one to go and just sort of play it back and get a feel for what it would sound like and what it's actually going to finally look like. I didn't bother to record the computer audio, so you won't be able to hear that very well. Um, but that's just an example. I can look at the waveforms and just sort of listen to it and match up how I want. Um, so you can get a very complex looking scene. And when you add that along with Ken Burns and, you know, that's zooming in and zooming out on the individual photos, you can get a really, really intricate looking shot without even ever having to be on set. So now when you go on set to film, you can have this on your phone, say, have this video, or just have these, uh, these pictures printed out um, and just on a on a piece of paper to keep with you and you can look at them as you film to sort of figure out uh, what shots I want for different places and um, I definitely don't storeboard every single shot I know I'm gonna have way more shots than these but this is sort of at least one shot I want to have in it and of course I'll have filler shots in between and stuff like that but this just gives me a basic idea of what it's going to look like once it comes together well anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful and I really suggest going and downloading this software. It really helps me prepare for my shoots and that's always a good thing when you might have a very limited amount of time to film and you need to know exactly what to do and when to do it. Well, I think that's it. I'm Shai. Thanks for watching. Peace. I think that's about it.